In this lecture, we're going to continue our derivation of the uh, rate of growth of an individual droplet due to vapor condensation. Last time, we developed these two equations uh, where the uh, mass growth rate of the droplet was equal to 4 pi r times the diffusivity of water vapor in air times the difference in the water uh, vapor number concentration uh, far from the droplets and at the droplet surface times the mass of an individual water vapor molecule. And in this equation, the growth rate of the droplet is equal to 4 pi r times the diffusivity times the difference in the density of water vapor far from the droplet minus the density at the droplet surface. Um, if we recall that the uh, saturation vapor pressure from the ideal gas law, E uh, alpha V is equal to R sub VT, uh, the specific volume is 1 over the density of the vapor. You solve for the density of the vapor. Um, you get that equal to the uh, vapor pressure divided by R sub VT. You make that transformation. You can have a third form of this equation. dm dt is equal to 4 pi RD over R sub VT times the uh, vapor pressure far from the droplet minus the vapor pressure at the droplet surface. We can make use of the uh, idea that our droplets are spherical, which is a very good assumption for clogged droplets. In a spherical droplet, the mass of the droplet is equal to 4 thirds pi r cubed, which is the volume, times the density of liquid water. Um, if you take the derivative of this quantity, dm dt, um, you'll end up with 4 pi r squared times the density of liquid water times dr dt. Uh, and that, of course, is equal to this equation up here. Uh, so 4 pi rd rho v infinity minus rho v r. Uh, you can go ahead and then solve this equation for dr by dt, and you'll get the expression that the growth rate of the droplet in terms of its radius growing is equal to the diffusivity times the density the difference in the density of the water vapor far from the droplet at minus the droplet surface divided by the density of liquid water divided by R. So the growth rate, dr by dt, is actually proportional to 1 over R. Um, you can do this transformation and you can turn this growth rate equation, dr by dt, into one that depends upon the vapor pressure uh, instead of the density of water vapor. And we, uh, it's interesting to note that the vapor pressure far from the droplet is just the actual vapor pressure in the atmosphere. And the vapor pressure at the droplet surface is actually E sub S of prime of T of R, which is the saturation vapor pressure over a curved solution droplet, which is uh, we got from our Kohler curves. And so in that case, uh, this quantity E of R is actually E sub S uh, of T of infinity, which is our saturation vapor pressure over plane surface of pure water, uh, times uh, including the uh, curvature effect and including the solute effect. So you'll note that the dr by dt equation is actually specific to an individual particle. Uh, so you would have a different growth rate for each cloud droplet that formed on a different particle uh, in terms of comp particle composition or particle size. There's another transformation that we can make, and that is to divide uh, both the numerator and the denominator by 1 over e of infinity. Um, and if you do that, you'll end up with e infinity rho L r sub v, uh, excuse me, the e infinity over r sub t is actually this quantity here, which is the density of the vapor. Uh, and we now have this quantity here which we're going to redefine as the supersaturation. So S is uh, equal to 1 minus E over R divided by E infinity. Uh, so we have several different uh, parameters that we can use to describe the moisture content of the atmosphere. Uh, we have the relative humidity. We have the saturation ratio S, which was just the E of R over E infinity. And we have the supersaturation, uh, which is unfortunately still governed by the S. Uh, which in this case is 1 minus E of R over E infinity. So a supersaturation of 0 would actually be um, a situation where you have a relative humidity of 100%. And so you can do that transformation um, and you'll get the dr by dt 
uh, is equal to the diffusivity of water vapor times the density of water vapor far from the droplet divided by the density of liquid water times the supersaturation, the 1 minus E over R uh, divided by E infinity. And you can do that same transformation to the dm by dt equation, and you'll end up with this expression, where the growth rate of the droplet in terms of mass is equal to 4 pi rd times the density of the vapor far from the droplet times the supersaturation. Uh, it's important to note that when we derive these equations, we ignore the latent heat release. Uh, so as the condensation process occurs, it actually warms the surface of the droplet. And if you warm the surface of the droplet, you're going to alter the saturation vapor pressure over that curved solid solution droplet because you're changing the temperature. In fact, as you change the temperature, as you increase the temperature, you cause the supersaturation to actually decrease, uh, which slows the growth. So as a result, these growth equations that we have here are actually represent the maximum growth rate of a droplet uh, being exposed to a given supersaturation. The actual growth rate uh, will be somewhat smaller. So let's take a look at some actual data. And the figure that's about to show up here on the screen is actually the growth rate in terms of mass and the growth rate in terms of radius of an individual droplet uh, that is subjected to a given supersaturation. So to orient this, uh, we have mass on this axis on a log scale, and we have time on this axis, uh, which is also on a log scale. Uh, so the radius is going from essentially 30 microns up to 300. Uh, the mass is uh, in terms of micrograms. Uh, just for reference, uh, a 30 uh, micrometer radius droplet would be a you know, common cloud droplet size. Uh, 100 micrometer would be uh, the beginning essentially of uh, drizzle. Uh, 1,000 micrometer uh, droplet, uh, that would be a one millimeter droplet, that would be a small rain droplet. So what we have is it does not take very much time in order to get to uh, 30 microns uh, inside the droplet. Uh, so time moves very fast and you end up with a 30 micrometer droplet. But in order to grow that droplet by vapor condensation from 30 microns up to 100 microns, uh, which is essentially kind of the beginning of your drizzle uh, kind of, you know, in this region, uh, takes a very long time on this log scale. So the growth rate of your droplet at first is very large, uh, and then that growth rate in terms of the radius actually slows down quite a bit. And the analogy that I have here is trying to make a, a large ball of twine. Um, at first, you grab a tennis ball, you grab some uh, twine, and you start wrapping it around, and you're adding mass to this ball, and, it's, and the radius is growing very quickly. Uh, but soon, after that radius gets large, the amount of twine that's required in order to grow the radius of this ball becomes significantly larger. And so the growth rate actually decreases significantly at that point.